news. Welcome to kombucha. Kombucha is a fermented tea. It is one of our favorite drinks. We hop off it. My kids love it. They call it kombucha and it rocks. Yes! Okay, so it's a fermented tea, great for probiotic bacteria, for your immune system, for energy, for detoxification, and for great elimination. First thing that I would say about kombucha is that it's part of the fermented food group. So it's full of bacteria that's very good for your digestion. That's why I drink it, I find it fantastic. It's super tasty, tastes like lemonade, takes a week to brew, and it's easy to make. Ready to, ready to do it? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Okay, first thing you will need, you will need what's known as a SCOBY. So this is a SCOBY. Some of you might look at it and go, Ugh, that it looks like a kind of a silicone implant or like some sort of a creature. SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. Question, Stephen, where do I get a SCOBY? Okay, you can buy them online, but if not, you can make your own. Simply buy a bottle of kombucha that hasn't been pasteurized or kind of heat treated, pour it into a jar and leave it sit for the guts of a month. Even two weeks, it'll slowly start to develop a little bit of a film. The longer you leave it, even add a little bit of sugar, it'll develop more of a, a scoby. The th thing about fermented food is that it's live, it's living, that there's an actual living culture in there, and that's what, why all the bacteria is so good for our own gut. And did you know, two-thirds of our immune system is based in our gut? And our gut that's has more fact. nerve endings than our brain. Wow! She's worth know? faint of knowledge today. Okay, perfect. So you will need a scoby, you will need a bit of kombucha that you will previously have purchased or so else brewed yourself. why is this kombucha red, Steve? This kombucha is red because we are using a wild berry tea. Traditionally, kombucha is used using a black tea, which is caffeine. We want to brew this where it's decaffeinated so my kids can enjoy it without being staying up all night wired. Good one. Okay, great. You need some filtered water. Uh, the reason why you're using filtered water is this is a bacteria and yeast and you don't want to have water that will have fluoride or chlorine in it. So ideally you use distilled water or else if you can find spring water from a natural spring. Okay, Steve, if I can find distilled water or spring water, find the best you can, it'll do all right. And worst case scenario, could I just use the water from the tap? You could, but it's probably well, listen, not as good. I brewed it for a year and a half just through using the water from the tap, so... It's grand using the water for the tap, okay. if you can't find the others. Okay, great. Okay, as I said, you will need a litre jar. I have put in 60 grams of white sugar. <gasps> oh my sugar. God. Is this not a sugary beverage? <gasps> yes, there is sugar in it, but the, in essence, the probiotic or the SCOBY is gonna feed on the sugar. That's what's gonna use to grow and to create probiotic bacteria. And the longer you leave it ferment, the more acidic it's gonna get, the more of that sugar it's gonna eat. And uh, they say typically that a fermented Kombucha that's been over a week old has about 90% of the sugar has been digested, even more. So in essence, the sugar is gone. Okay, so I have 60 grams of sugar per liter. I'm gonna take two tea bags. I'm using a wild berry tea. You could use black tea or whatever type of tea you want. So could I use ginger tea or? No, I'd, I'd either go green, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll <laughs> thank you for catching me out there. This one we're using a wild berry tea. Traditionally it's a black tea or a green tea. They're the ones that I know that work and they're the ones that I've used myself that work. Uh, so I have two tea bags of wild berry tea. I have 60 grams of sugar. Uh, I'm taking... So in terms of ratio, it's 60 grams of sugar to one liter of water or tea. Yeah. So that's what it always is and then your SCOBY. Okay, if I pour boiling water straight into this jar, it's gonna crack. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna add in a little bit of filtered water just to start. And now I'm gonna add in the rest boiling water. Also, our also your scoby would die if it's too warm. Yeah, okay, so let's put in more water. Okay, the reason why I've gone in with boiling water is so that the sugar uh, dissolves, dissolves, yes, and that the tea starts to um, brew. Very so I'm gonna leave that until the temperature reduces so it's below 37 degrees, and until the tea has gone nice and red. So we've left that sit for about 10 minutes. It's now actually nice and cool. The temperature is nice and cool. It's below 37 degrees and we have a wooden spoon. So kombucha doesn't like metal, so we are using wood. Yes! Okay, so just to recap, there was 60 grams of sugar, one liter of water and two tea bags. We used a wild berry tea because we want this decaf. Use warm water because it helps dissolve the sugar and it, next, and it soaks the tea. Next step, take your SCOBY. The larger your SCOBY, the quicker it's gonna convert that sugar into probiotic bacteria. Yeasts and bacteria that are so great for in goes the scoby. And next I have a cup, about six ounces of previous kombucha, in it goes. Oh my. Beautiful. Okay, and that's it. And then I'm gonna literally leave the lid kind of open on it. I'm gonna take 
a clean tea towel and just cover it. The main reason to do that is to stop fruit flies coming in and stealing your kombucha and contaminating it. In terms of fermentation time, the longer you leave it ferment, the more acidic it's gonna get. If you live in a warm country, country, it will ferment a lot quicker. Ideally, it's left at a temperature of about 20 degrees and it's in indirect sunlight. And ideally, it's in a glass jar. However, a plastic will do fine. It just might leach a little bit. And ceramic works fine as well. I've done it in ceramic for ages. Okay. But typically, it'll take about a week to ferment. The kombucha that we make here in the Happy Pair, we will leave ferment for 20 days because we like it to be a little bit acidic, a little bit tart. If you eat that after, drink that after seven days, it might be a little bit sweet. Okay. So this is the wow. first fermentation. We will leave this for a week. Okay, and Dave, let's just disappear. I'm gonna go downstairs Okay, here. we're gonna disappear for a week. Okay. Bye, see you in a week. Okay, she's been fermenting for about 10 days and look, she's nice and fizzy. Oi! Woo! Woo! It's like beer. Okay, so <laughs> if you did have that closed like that, it would pop and that's why we have left this one open that we pretended that we left ferment for a week. So we have removed the scoby from this. <clears throat> it smells delicious. And that's the first fermentation. That one is good to go, but however, <coughs> if you wanted to make it super, Woo! super fizzy and you wanted to play with the flavors a little more, you would do what's known as a second fermentation. Okay, to do a second He's fermentation. He's going all technical now. He's shown off his, his knowledge now. Okay, second fermentation. Take a jar or a bottle, add in a tiny little bit of sugar. You don't have to, but if you really do want it super carbonated, add in a tiny little bit. Add in the kombucha. And then you decide, okay, what flavor do we want? Oh, oh we I'd like ginger. Okay, well then you would get a ginger tea bag. Many people add in fresh fruit, however, it will, it will minimize the shelf life significantly. Your best seasoning with a tea bag, a dried tea bag, because there's less moisture in it, there's less likelihood of developing bacteria, yeast, and mold. Okay, cool. so there we go. Leave that there, put a lid on, and I will leave that sit. For the first day, it will need to be burped. So that sounds crazy. This is shout out to Fiona, our wonderful fermenter. She told me you'll need to burp it. So you will come back a day later and you will go literally take the lid off and it'll go poof. Release that gas, put the lid back on. And that's, that's burping. burping. It. It's like Leave it sit for three days and it will be gushing. It'll be just. It'll be like drinking red berry champagne. Yeah, beautiful. But that's the second fermentation. Just to recap in terms of second fermenting, you will get some form of bottle. You might, this is one liter, so you might have four 250 gram bottles. You'll put a 250 mil bottles. 250 mil bottles, excuse me. Mills and grams are actually the same. Uh, you'll put in like a pinch of sugar into each one, pour in the kombucha, first ferment kombucha. Decide, okay, we want this one fennel, we want this one ginger, you want this one wild berry. You want, you want this, this one, one hibiscus. Hibiscus. Put the tea bags in, season with tea bags, pour in the kombucha, put the lids on, leave them ferment for one day, burp them. Take the, put the lids back on and leave them three days later, they're just gonna be fizzling and just, ah, boof. Okay. Anyway, that is kombucha. We, we find it fantastic. I've drank it for years, I love we it. We ferment loads. Our wonderful fermenter, Fiona, is amazing. She was meant to be on this video, but she uh, wasn't around today. Yeah. Um, uh, she's she's uh, Fiona the fermenter on Instagram, if you wanna check her out. Mm. Like uh, that's so tasty. You could do it with black tea, but I think wild berry is my favorite. And if you've got kids, it's fantastic. My kids drink lots of it. They love it. Um, it's and the sweet, longer it's you tasty. leave it ferment, the more acidic it becomes, and the more used they get used to kind of drinking slightly acidic, slightly tart, but so mm. beneficial bacteria. Um, hope you found this useful. Do comment below how you like to use your kombucha and how you get on. Uh, share this with anyone that needs some kombucha bacteria probiotic inspiration. Yes! Uh, big shout out to all fermented foods out there. And big shout out to Fiona, our fermenter. And, and thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. Bye. Mwah.